Hey fellow backyard boys, Nick here. So today I'm with Chris, and behind us is a yurt. But uh, since this is my channel, of course, this yurt is made out of PVC pipe. So Chris, tell them how much. Uh, so roughly about 1,500, 1,600 feet of uh, three quarter inch conduit, gray conduit pipe. Uh, to make all the wall sections and all the rafters and yeah. fixtures and attachments. Uh, so you guys go a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a uh, this fun making it. I, I was going off a, a design that I've uh, been working over for <laughs> about a year or so. I've been planning it out. And, Figure out how much I was going to need. I finally started like amassing materials here and there at a time as my like, finances would allow. <laughs> um, and then we had a we had a big event for our martial arts group. And I needed to have it done, so that was kind of the, the, the galvanizing uh, deadline. And it worked like a demon. Got it done. Voila. <laughs> so, uh, right now is a skeleton of ABS, or not ABS, PVC conduit, uh, skinned with painter's canvas with a layer of uh, primer, waterproof primer on the outside just to reflect heat and um, keep the, the rain out. So. More looks looks the part for an authentic yurt. Uh, but yeah, it's, it took a while to make, and now that it's done, I'm pretty happy with it. And it's impressive. It's impressive because we're actually at a public park right now. How long did this take to set up? Uh, well, four people getting in each other's way. About 20 minutes. You got like. There are three people who know what they're doing and know where everything goes, and it would take 15 minutes to put up. Even less to take down, about 10 minutes to take down. And uh, the whole thing packs up into smaller than a truck bed when it's all bundled together. All the wall sections come apart and fold up. They stack up, and it's, you know, all the wall sections for this entire year stacks up about that thick. By about that wide, by about 10 feet long, and uh, I have 10 feet long, like seven feet long, and yeah, it, it, it works. So, yeah, so let's go take a look at it, see what it looks like on the inside. So here's the yurt from the outside, and now we're going in. And there are only two pieces of wood on this whole structure. That would be the door and. smoke hole at the top so here it is it's pretty spacious you can stand up I'm, I'm five foot eight and this is where my head hits and I can touch the wall so you can see this is all PVC pipe and we have it open for more light and so normally this would all be closed up. This area would be. Well, for the camera's benefit. Anything else? If you can see this section right here, from there all the way to right over here, is one wall segment. This is four and a half feet tall at the wall or at the shoulder. And these rafters are like seven feet tall or long. Me, the middle. It has a uh, overall diameter of about 17 feet on the inside, with about seven feet to the ring. Like a, a more traditional Mongolian style of yurt would be about six and a half feet. Two meters, maybe. Um, so that's what this 
collar here is for I can add, like right now it's geared for being a little bit higher um, I can take this one foot section out and this whole ring will drop down to about here and that would be more of a traditional Mongolian style uh, right now it's a little higher for more storage capacity because while I am away I'm going to be using this to store my tools and uh, equipment and whatnot in my house. <laughs> so I am in fact making this thing weather tight um, for long term storage so we'll see how that holds up. Everything being PVC and the only bits of wood on here are all treated. Uh, it should be rot resistant. At least the skeleton will be rot resistant. The, the canvas is pretty much all, all I'm worried about but I've used mold inhibiting paint uh, that I'm kind of like infusing all the canvas with and that should make it a lot more weather tight. Um, before I leave I've been advised by our leader to uh, uh, wrap tarp and or like plastic sheeting around the whole thing to make it like truly waterproof but it's gonna be living under trees too so it's not gonna be that big of an issue though I will still wrap it with uh, plastic sheeting um, so, I wish I had a calculator on that. Figure out the square foot of the inside here. But, um, yeah, as you can see, and again, I'm five foot eight, you can see how much interior space this whole thing has. And it's quite huge. It, it could, like, in a camp out, you could sleep probably seven, eight people in here comfortably without uh, getting in each other's way. Just lay out cots and radio pattern. If you're going for more of a traditional Mongolian setup, there would be like a fire pit here, like a, a raised brazier, and even a small fire would keep this amount of space very warm. Um, not necessarily because of the warmth coming off the heat, uh, coming off the fire, but the heat generated from infrared radiation bouncing off the inside of the walls and reflecting back in. This, this, with the smoke hole ring open, smoke just vortexes right out the top. There would be no smoky atmosphere on the inside. Air would come in through the bottom of the skirt around the walls, filter in, and then just toroid up and out wherever the wind is blowing from. It'll suck it right up and out. When the when rain does come, or you want to button this up, there's a a, ring, uh, a cover that goes on the top. I think I pushed it a little too far off, but this whole ring would be covered over, and it's buttoned up right there. It is it is watertight. So, um, apart from our martial arts group being Mongolian oriented, this is a very like wise type of structure to build since its design is inherently uh, aerodynamic. Um, that means is that if even if the wind is blowing up to 90 miles an hour for some of the more traditional yurts, 90 miles an hour would just dome right over and just cause the structure to hunker down even stronger. Um, obviously not with these ones because these rafters are still pretty thin. I need to beef them up a little bit more um, to make them stiffer. But if these were traditional wood rafters, um, it would be strong enough that you could actually walk around on the roof of this thing without it caving in. Um, that and the uh, like traditional Mongolian yurts would have a, a thick layer of felt, several inches of felt, wrapped in canvas on either side. And that would, you know, you could get in the negative digits and it would, you wouldn't be able to tell it was cold outside. It would be 70s, 80s inside the yurt. Outside it would be negative 10, negative 20. Um, right now we just have a, one carpet down, but this whole area would all would be layers of carpet. Um, maybe not directly under the smoke hole, or under the, the brazier, but um, yeah, for, for here in, in the park, just setting it up, uh, this works pretty well. We've got seats, you can you could seat half a dozen people, a dozen people even, if you had enough chairs for me. <laughs> I only brought what I had. But uh, 
yeah. Everyone sits around the edges. We all talk, and it's just one big party in here. Get some uh, strobe lights and a big subwoofer. Yeah. This works pretty good. So you're going to be working on another one? Yeah. Uh, when I get back from um, my trip, I'm going, uh, Wolf and I are talking about uh, making them for sale or like, some, some way of building them for outfitting people. Last, uh, the last big event we had, we had a lot of people inquiring how much would it cost to make one for them or how much would it cost for this one. And obviously I wouldn't want to sell this one because I, I need it and it's not something I would want to sell. It, it, this is my first try making one of these things. I, I would want to refine my, my technique before considering selling them to someone. But uh, yeah, maybe when you uh, make another one, we can film get a, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll work on like some of the, some of the bugs. I'll work a few bugs out of the system and then uh, bring them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can hang a lantern in here, and it it really wouldn't like if you painted all the walls white. Any light that you had in here would just reflect off, and it'd be it would be soft light in here without much energy expended at all. Um, you know, with the structure of this thing, uh, there are some yurts that are built. They'd be twice this diameter, and the ring where all the rafters would join up, the, the smoke hole ring would actually be another platform, and another yurt could go on top of that, and it'd actually be a two-story. Here, those are like very large, very very large yurts. Those are for entire families or like a like a large gathering. And yeah, it's for a first try, for a first run, just going off of a paper plan. And it was all math. It was all just working out where to drill and where to, you know, how how long to trim these rafters drilling each and every one of these little holes you know I just I used a jig and a and a tiny little tabletop drill press and I was able to drill all these holes to make these lattice and everything is modular everything stacks up one person I, I myself can take this up I'll put this up and take it down in like 30 minutes like a, a structure big enough to house a small family on an outing in 30 minutes with one person so this is not difficult at all I mean, the, the, the trickiest part is holding this smoke hole ring up, like balancing it up and plugging in a few of these rafters at different angles and attaching them to the walls. So like once you get the walls up to the door, which is not hard, uh, you just you open up one, you slightly curve it, you open up the next one, you slightly curve it, butt them up, tie them together so you, now you have one large crescent. And you do the same thing on the other side. Now you have a big ring, you kind of like kick it out till everything's about even. And uh, it really helps if you have a, like a tape measure or a yardstick and you know what your overall diameter is. So you can take the radius and just standing in the middle, just kind of like testing where the sides have to go. And once you have the ring laid down, that's most of the work right there. You just plug in a few of these rafters, enough so that you can hold up this ring with kinematic support. And very carefully to start plugging in a few more and then that will reinforce and you go to the opposite side and plug them all in and eventually you'll just be able to put them in one after the other just walk around the side um, yes. plugging them all in and then like the tricky part is just getting the canvas on but you, you have a big round donut with a hole in the middle of canvas fold that in half throw you know throw that you know the whole thing up on top so it only covers it off half and you just walk around the edge pulling that last half over and un unfurling the canvas over the top and once you have them secured um, these edges need to come down like a little bit more like I have this like stretched out a little bit bigger for this event because it's like, a lot more people here than, than my normal crew um, and I can pull this in a little bit more and then this canvas will overlap around the edges like a few inches down and then that would interface with the wall sections, which all have to be stitched together. These these gaps are, these won't be here when I'm done with it. Everything's gonna be stitched together in one big piece. 
and this this drawstring here would be uh, you know because there's a there's a rope that runs along the inside edge here. This thing would all snug up tight, and these things would be snug down as well. And there's a uh, bits of rope like cord, a paracord. They'll crisscross over the top and tie off to the bottom of the walls over and then tie it off on the other side and that will keep this from flopping up in the air because right now the wind's kind of catching it and, and causing it to float like that <laughs> <laughs> well right now it's it's kind of hanging on i think it's i have the uh because i have the smoke hole ring uncovered the wind that's blowing in through the door isn't blowing the skirt you know blowing the, the canvas cover off so right now it's actually like suction down onto the structure but if like a big gust comes and peels this whole thing off on camera, that'd be hilarious. But uh, yeah, right now it's it's just kind of hanging out. I don't think there's much wind to speak of outside. Uh, it is drizzling. I can kind of hear the rain outside, and I don't feel it at all. The rain's just gonna hit, sheet off down to the edges, and even when it was it was unpainted canvas, unpainted canvas actually worked as a pretty good rain fly. And it just, it sheeted off at one of the other events we did where we had this set up. It sheeted off and all of us just hung out inside while it was pouring rain outside. And it was pretty nice. Um, when the canvas was unpainted, uh, a lot more light was able to transmit through. Because I have paint on it, it's so dark in here. Uh, if it's just straight canvas, it'll be kind of like wheat, wheat and soft light very soothing you know, not not too bright you, like in direct sunlight it'll just it'll be like being under a shady tree in here um, something I, I was thinking about doing is if I wanted to set this up at the beach since this is Hawaii uh, instead of using this big heavy canvas which is kind of clunky I would make a, a, a similar cover the same size as this canvas out of uh, white sheets like king size sheets uh, real thin 200 thread count sheets you can get them at Walmart whatever and it would be like a uh, a big shade covered awning. You could sit under under here and not get sunburned. And you you just camp out here for hours. You wouldn't even have to put up the walls, just so long as the roof was secured down to the walls so it doesn't fly off. Um, just the sheer weight of this thing would keep it down. And if there was wind coming sideways, that would be really comfortable. It'd be a nice cool breeze coming out over the beach. And face the the door out to the. Uh, out to where the sun would set and you just sit back here and that's nature right there. It's the whole beach and pan panoramic, albeit through the uh, the lattice work of the walls. And right now they're they're gray, they're unpainted, but they can be painted. I mean it is ABS, it'll 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 take paint. So if I took like handfuls of brown paint and just kind of down the thing, I could get some passable wood-looking grain on each of these. But since these are so floppy, I've been trying to figure out a way to uh, stiffen them up, and maybe I'll get some uh, another sh like a sheath of conduit, PVC conduit. Uh, throw some Gorilla Glue on the pipe and slide, you know, ram the sheath up over it. And so those two laminated together, it'd be a little bit bigger of a diameter, or I could even like take one that's even bigger and squish it down so that the widest point of you know the the pipe, I'd squish it down to like that kind of profile, and the inside diameter would be about three quarters of an inch, which is what all this is. And then just cram one of these rafters up into it, and so it would actually look like a traditional like slat instead of a round rod, which would look a lot more like the wooden ones. Um, that would serve to both stiffen it up so that you could put a, a heavier load on the roof. Um, traditional gears you can walk around on the roof. Like up on here, they're so rigid, you could walk around on the outside of a, of a, of a yurt all the way up to the smoke hole ring if you needed to, to change something or, or work on it. Um, obviously you can't do that with these because it's, it's only three quarter inch schedule 40. So it's not the strongest, but it is doing its job for what, it, what I wanted it to do and I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, I didn't even use, I used up maybe 200 yards of paracord 
550 cord. I got a big thousand foot spool of uh, Cowdy Brown. That's what all these little knots are. You know, they're they're just they're drilled straight. You know, the, the holes are drilled straight through and fed in a piece of paracord and tied it off on either side. Um, you can go around and, and burn all the ends to secure them, but I didn't have time to do that yet. Uh, I found it easier to just knot it, and then when the whole thing is all bundled together, it just makes a, a row of fuzzy knots. And I'd take a heat gun and just go along the line, and it would just squish all these ends down in one pass. It was really nice. Uh, that worked out really easy. Um, if I had a a better budget for it, I would I wouldn't use canvas. Canvas is a natural fiber and mildew. We'll get into that. Uh, that's kind of an issue that I'm, I'm working around right now. I may have to treat this a little bit more with something like Lysol to kill off the mold in it, or I'll just do away with this cover altogether and make a new one out of like Sunforger or. Uh, uh, some kind of UV proof material because I don't want to sit under here and get sunburned. You know? That would double. That would suck. Uh, if it, so long as it's it's UV proof and like rain resistant, that would be a perfect yurt cover material. Uh, painted canvas right now is doing the job in a pinch, so that's what I'm going with for now. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be the first of many. I think I, I learned a lot. Um, you know, in no way is this the, the final iteration of it. This is just, this is round one, and it will be improved upon and streamlined and made more efficient in the different generations to come. So I, I will definitely keep folks posted on how this, uh, how this all turns out. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for talking to us. Of course. All right. So, see you guys next time.